Then another question for the condensation polymers playlist. So we're at number six now. So this one covers aromatic reactions. Then there's the condensation polymers part, which I think is quite tricky. Be interested to see what you think. And then there's a calculation. Hope you liked the video. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, why don't you think about doing that? But as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video, if you want to try it first. Okay, so make a start. So we'll do this reaction first, a reaction with bromine. So we've just got to ask ourselves what part of salicylic acid can react with bromine and it's the benzene ring itself. So I've gone for that product there. The mark scheme says you could have any number of bromines attached up to four, obviously, uh, and they can be in any position as well. Moving on to this reaction here. So what part of salicylic acid can react with sodium carbonate? and it's just the carboxylic acid part. So there's the product there. You can show the charges if you want. You go COO minus Na plus. I haven't bothered there. So the phenol part doesn't react, even though it's acidic, it doesn't react with sodium carbonate because phenol is a very, very weak acid and sodium carbonate is a weak base. So moving on to the reaction of salicylic acid with propanoic anhydride. I've drawn up its structure a little bit more detailed there. So what part of salicylic acid can react with this? And it's the phenol part. So there's the first of the organic products. So basically all I've done is reacted this part of the uh, propanoic anhydride uh, with the phenol group. So basically that H has come off and we've generated this ester group here, which means that the other product's going to be propanoic acid and the H that's come off the phenol has basically combined with what's left of the propanoic anhydride. Okay, so moving on to the condensation polymer part. So we've got to um, basically combine enough of these to generate one amide linkage and one ester linkage. And hopefully you can appreciate why you can do that because the amide linkage would be formed from the reaction of the amine group with the carboxylic acid group the ester linkage would be formed by combining the phenol group with the carboxylic acid group. So to help me explain this, I've drawn three monomers side by side. So we'll start with these two first of all. So I've put these this way together because what I want to do is take out um, a water molecule here and that will generate that C double bond O NH group. So that's how the amide group would form. So I'm going to have to do that there as well. And then if we move on to this part of the middle uh, monomer and this third monomer, what I need to do is spin this around because I want the carboxylic acid group to be next to this phenol group. Now I've got this repositioned, it's much easier to visualize and explain what needs to happen. So to generate the ester group, I'm gonna take the OH off the carboxylic acid group and the H off the phenol group. Obviously I've got to start doing that there as well. So that's the section of the polymer done now. Obviously these bonds have been massively exaggerated because of where the monomers started, but hopefully that all made sense. And finally, the calculation. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is work out how many moles that can be prescribed per kilogram of body mass. So obviously that was mass over MR. Just be careful, the mass needs to be in grams, not milligrams. And the MR of PS came out at 153. So there's that many moles per kilogram. So we're told a child weighs 20 kilos. So the moles of PS that they could have would be 20 times that number, so that's coming out of 3.922 times 10 to the minus two. And then to get the number of the PS molecules this child could have is the moles multiplied by Avogadro's number, which to three significant figures came out of 2.36 times 10 to the 22. 